Welcome to the session on performance analysis of DC versus XTP BPF hooks. My name is Vinay. Thank you for joining. The agenda for today is we will look at the eBPF hooks that are available to us at the network device layer, and then uh, also look at the difference between XTP, which is Express Data Path, and Linux Traffic Control hooks, the DC hooks. We will also take a close look at our use case of securing host processes, which motivated this whole exercise, followed by how we set up our performance test framework and then how we measured the performance and collected the CPU profile. We will look at an analysis of the CPU profile and uh, draw some insights that we uh, discuss some insights that, that we drew and then open it up for Q&A. So, this is your typical network stack. At the top, you have the application followed by a socket layer. As it sends uh, frames, it goes traverses a socket layer followed by TCP IP layer, the net device, and finally, the hardware NIC. In, in the choices that we have with regards to PPF programs that we can attach at the net device layer, we broadly have two choices, two categories. One is the Linux traffic control hooks, and then the other is the XTP hooks. Uh, traffic control hooks are available to us on both ingress and egress, whereas at this time, XTP hooks are available only on ingress. Uh, XTP hooks do have different modes. You have the offload mode, the driver mode, and the generic mode. In the offload mode, the BPF program runs in the NIC. In the driver mode, it's run uh, early as earliest possible point when the driver is invoked and handling the packet. And in generic, it's used mainly for testing, as we'll show discuss later. A key difference between the two is that you have uh, SK buff parameters being handled by TCPPF programs versus XTP buff, which requires buffers that are serialized. Let's look at our use case, which is about network micro segmentation for host processes. Well, consider this. You have, uh, this is a typical Kubernetes cluster. You have the master node and then you have the worker node. And in the master node, you have the kube API server running and it, it connects to the kubelet, which is listening on TCP port 10.2.5.0. The reason for the API server to connect the kubelet on this port is uh, things like when you were to execute a command like kubectl exec to see what's going on in your container or kubectl logs. Now, there is no good reason for anybody else other than the kube API server to be connecting to this port. Uh, if there is, then we need to know about it, but most likely it's some kind of a DOS attack. So what would you do? Well, eBPF to the rescue. So with eBPF programs attached to the NIC, we can inspect the packet way down, way early, and then determine if it's a legitimate packet, is the sender legitimate, and make a policy determination, a policy verdict on whether to allow that packet to go up the stack or drop it. So in this context, when we uh, were looking at the different places where we could attach the eBPF programs, we started wondering about the performance aspect of it. Is it better to do generic program? Is it better to do TC or XTP driver mode? And we needed some data to make our design choices. So our traffic setup, traffic test performance uh, test setup is very simple. It's two VMs running on a M2 Mac, Max, which is a pretty powerful system. We have the IPerf3 sender, which is sending at the max rate rate can. We, we're just using a single TCP uh, stream because uh, we just want to get numbers on uh, how they compare apples to apples in the same setup. So the sender sends traffic down the stack on this VM and it's received, the target is this VM on the right, and it's received with a NIC, it traverses up the stack. Now the programs that we attach here are doing nothing. They're dummy programs, they just return, okay, let it through. But what we do get from this is the overhead of just calling these programs. Is it more expensive to attach it here, here or here? We get that information. So, to run the traffic test, we use the iperf3 tool. And on the receiver, we it's really simple. We run it for 60 seconds. We we took we did three tries and then got the best and average of three. Uh, picked a random port, 23434. You could pick whatever you like. And uh, you send the logs to null so that you don't 
burn any kind of CPU or use CPU just logging and that gives the network the most amount of CPU that it needs. On the sender, you specify the target, of course, the destination port and 60 seconds and well, the intervals, this is the interval of logging and time 60 seconds. And then the max is five gigs, five gigs because we were, saturated, we were saturating it at two gig in our setup. Now, to collect the CPU profile, profile information, we use profile BPFCC tool and we run it for 70 seconds. We start this tool just after after the IPERF receiver has started, but just before the IPERF sender is started. That way we get the CPU profile for pretty much the test that we are doing. And then we send it out to our out file. After you collected the CPU profile information, what you do is you go to this wonderful tool called Flame Graph that was created by Brendan Gregg. Uh, you get that and run the simple script with this command line and output it to this profile.svg file. And this is going to give you a visual of what's going on with your CPU during your test. Now let's look at some numbers. In our test, uh, as I mentioned before, we were using M2 Max. The VMs have eight CPUs, 16 gig of memory. We use the word IO PCI net device and uh, in shared networking mode. The kernel version used was 5150-78 on Ubuntu 22.04. And we used an MTU of 1500 bytes. It's a limitation of the bridge that we had. We didn't have time to work around that, but it didn't matter for our use case. Uh, the TCP buffers on the read and write were uh, one page, which is 4096 bytes. In all the tests, we saw CPU utilization around nine to 10%, which indicated that uh, the CPU was not pegged. There was plenty of CPU. And uh, the limitation was in whatever the network bandwidth we had through that bridge. Now, looking at the numbers, it's no surprise that without any eBPF program attached, we get uh, the best numbers with 2.13 for the best of three tries and 2.12 is average. For XTP driver mode, you get 2.12 gig and 2.11 gig on average of three tries. And that's because this XTP program is in the way. It needs, there is a small cost to invoking that. Now that's followed by Linux TC, which is at 2.09 gigabits per second on the best of three tries and 2.087, which is really close followed by XTP generic mode, which has a fair amount of performance hit. You get 1.89 gigabits of the best of three tries with 1.87 as average. This, this difference between Linux TC and the XTP generic got us wondering, which is the reason why we profiled the CPU to find out what's going on. Now, when we look at the flame graphs, you kind of, it jumps at you. The Left-hand side is pretty similar. The right-hand side over here, these towers here, the skyline here looks a little different, looks pretty different. And when you look closely, this is the case of IRQ, which is the interrupt handler that's receiving packets. It's pretty small here, the number of samples you collect, but here it is fairly big. And if you zoom in closer, you look at this do X, and then we double click on that, we see, okay, so you have the IRQ sending the packet up, the receive, GRO receive, and then uh, SKB is allocated, and then do XTP generic receive. And then you have this pull tail, mem move, malloc, new slab, and then clear slab free. Okay, we kind of started. This is probably where our performance hit is coming from. There is a certain amount of overhead to using XTP in generic mode. In conclusion, XTP driver mode might be a good choice for the receive path to do network policy enforcement. The idea is that if you're gonna to have to drop a packet, do it before the OS resources are allocated. And we observed that uh, TC eBPF receive paths have a small overhead. XTP generic mode has an overhead, but it has its users. It's good for testing purposes. Uh, lastly, we have shared this the code and the results that we got from this simple test of ours on GitHub. Please take a look. Thank you. And we will be around for Q&A in the Slack channels. Mm -hmm.